So the purpose of the CTC Link project is to migrate um, all the colleges in the, in the Washington State uh, CTC system from the current legacy administrative uh, software, which was actually deployed in the early 80s, uh, to a more modern platform, uh, and in this case, PeopleSoft. And uh, what's kind of interesting about this project for me is that I have yet to run into somebody that isn't extremely excited about making this transition, which usually isn't the case when it comes to a software implementation or transition. Uh, but I think the fact that uh, they're dealing with a 30-year-old 30, 30 application is what's making the difference here in this particular project. So this is a, a rather extensive project because uh, we're dealing with uh, 34 institutions in this software implementation. And so it's been broken down into really five waves. Um, the first link wave in which uh, TCC and the Spokane Community College System are participating um, really is kind of the beta, the beta wave. So um, we'll have a chance to kind of test the system as we're implementing, uh, try to work through some bugs and get bugs fixed before going on to other waves. Uh, as well as you know, looking at configuration settings and finding out if there are some that aren't working and, and making tweaks uh, as we go through the implementation process. And then once we're finished, once first uh, link is finished, uh, then there will be four successive waves that the remainder of the uh, 34 community and technical colleges will be, will be run through. Um, and uh, the final uh, completion for the project will be in 2017. So it's a, it's a rather large project and, and is gonna take quite some time to, uh, to run through completion. So this is a look at the first link uh, timeline for the project. And this, um, this document should actually be in your, in, in your packet um, with some additional uh, resources and information. Um, and so I wanted to start by just kind of talking about um, the business process alignment workshops. Those are uh, those started last week, and uh, these workshops are meant for um, everybody within the system who uh, who uses the legacy environment. They can participate in these a uh, workshops in these sessions, and it gives them an idea of how business processes will work in the new PeopleSoft environment and what changes they may need to make um, in their current business processes to match uh, the new PeopleSoft environment. Uh, in addition to that, they'll also be um, informing the state uh, CTC link group on configuration uh, options and changes uh, or setup for configuration. Uh, this was also done in a prior uh, set of workshops called the Foundation Decisions where they looked at it in a global view and set some configuration options there and this will be more um, within the business processes uh, setting some configuration options and while this is going on they're also working on the technical development of the PeopleSoft environment and what I mean by that is is there's a technical team at the state uh, uh, CTC link group that uh, is looking at the uh, portal uh, strategy for the portal and a plan for implementing the portal the PeopleSoft portal um, also looking at um, integration with colleges, uh, third-party apps, so other applications that we use in the system and, and how we can integrate those into PeopleSoft, um, setting up the security environment and also the data validation piece and a way to convert data uh, from legacy into, into PeopleSoft. Um, and you'll see in the, the black bar there that that's, that's the data validation piece or, or getting data from legacy into uh, into the new PeopleSoft environment. And there's really a few stages involved with this. Uh, the first is that, that end users at the colleges will uh, have an opportunity to uh, go in and clean up the data that exists in the, in the legacy environment um, before it gets moved into PeopleSoft. And so uh, a significant amount of time will be spent doing that. And then once that's done, then they'll be converting the data so that it can be uploaded into PeopleSoft. And because the, the format is the, in the legacy system is, is so old and, and it's really a non-standard format, there's going to be a significant amount of time of just kind of converting that data. And then once it's been converted into a format that uh, PeopleSoft can, can recognize, uh, it'll be uploaded into a staging area within PeopleSoft. And, uh, and then some additional cleanup will be done at that point. And um, 
and then it's important to really get it as clean as possible in that staging area or the hub as they call it um, because once it gets moved into production there will be some cleanup that can be done but not not a whole lot so uh, it really needs to be as clean as possible before moving into that production environment and then once the BPA uh, workshops are completed then they'll start the configuration which kind of runs parallel with the data validation piece but they'll be configuring the PeopleSoft environment um, uh, based on feedback from the, set, the PPA and the foundation decision sessions uh, just to make sure that um, the system is set up properly and then the next phase is really a couple of items and that is the training and testing now the, the training is is quite a long timeline uh, frame but it's really that's really mostly development of the training and really they're only going to launch the training or make it available to end users uh, about a month or two prior to, to the go live date uh, for kind of just in time training so there's a significant amount of time that's spent on the development end and then while that's going on uh, testing of the environment will be going on as well so making sure that that the data is looking good and working well and configurations are set uh, properly those kinds of things and then for the first link colleges uh, Tacoma and uh, Spokane our go live date uh, is tentatively set at uh, August 11th 2014 and so finally I wanted to talk about some of the the benefits to uh, the PeopleSoft environment and I, I want to I've broken it down into uh, benefits uh, some of the benefits for students and some for faculty and staff and this is by no means an extensive or exhaustive list it's just a few things I kind of wanted to point out um, so on the student side um, one of the benefits is they'll be able to do uh, full online payments and not just I mean they can do some payments online now but they'll be able to do uh, partial payments so if they wanted to pay uh, just a bit off at a time they could do that they can also prioritize payments so when they submit a payment if they want you know bulk of it to go to or if they want the first payments to be going to uh, say a parking ticket or or something like that they can prioritize uh, how those payments are made uh, they can also set up an authorized uh, payer so if they have somebody that's helping them with uh, you know with paying uh, the school costs they can set somebody up so that they can view that information and also also pay uh, pay on the on the system uh, then there's also an online admissions application um, that's available to students where they can upload their documentation and they can even pay an application fee um, and all that can be done right within the system and then they can also apply for graduation online so those are just a few of, of, of the benefits that will be available to students and then some of the benefits on the faculty staff side of things um, are enhanced search capabilities uh, so you'll be able to search for a multiple of multiple different criteria when looking for groups of students or groups of, of, of people within the system um, so the search is much more robust than what we have with the legacy environment there's some enhancements to budgeting um, people can create uh, what-if scenario budgets uh, for planning purposes so if they wanted to say well what if we spent X amount of dollars on this particular project or this particular thing uh, they can see how that would how that would flow for uh, the remaining of the remainder of the budget cycle um, they can also look at uh, trend analysis by looking at multiple years of actuals so they can see uh, spending trends or or um, you know trends within the budgeting system um, that people will have access to uh, personal information via the self-service tool uh, so they can um, you know update their own personal information within the system without having to contact somebody in HR or going through um, a few hoops to hoops to kind of get that information updated they can do that themselves and then uh, especially on the faculty side uh, there will be an online enrollment overload option for them so they'll be able to uh, essentially add students to their classes themselves and eliminate the kind of uh, paper add drop form completely which you know would just eliminates a, a, a lot of work that different folks have to do and instructors have have the control over their classroom environment so they can add students uh, when they want and again this isn't a, a comprehensive list by any stretch of the imagination I just wanted to kind of point out a few a uh, few of the benefits uh, of the new system and uh, anyway that's the the update that I had planned to give today and, and uh, if you do have any questions uh, you can feel free to contact me via email um, or give me a call on the phone and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks.